Hi everyone, welcome to Eve Math Tutoring. Today's lesson is on powers and roots. Say you have a number raised to a power. So this number is just multiplied by itself four times. Okay, so if I had 2 to the power of n, that would just mean 2 is being multiplied by itself n times. So if n were 1,000, it would be 2 to the power of 1,000. If we have a negative number to an even power, so that's just, so negative, th this means negative 2 multiplied by itself 2 times. So my final answer is going to be positive. If I had negative 2 in close brackets all to the power of 3, because the negative 2 is inside brackets, that means it's negative 2 being multiplied by itself 3 times, which gives negative 8. So if you have a negative number raised to an even exponent, your answer is going to be positive. And if you have a negative number in brackets raised to an odd exponent, your answer is going to be negative. Now if we have negative 2 to the 2, that is not the same as negative 2 to the power of 2. Okay, so in this case, it's only the 2 that's raised to the power of 2. So it's, this part becomes 4, and then the negative actually attaches to your answer. So that part becomes negative 4. And in this case, we have negative 2 times negative 2. So the 2, t so the whole, the negative's also raised to the power of 2. Okay, so the answer is actually going to be positive 4. So these two expressions are not equal to each other. So it's important to keep that in mind. So you have to see if... If the 2 is just attached to the number, then it's only, you know, express, only the p number is to the power of 2, and the negative applies after. If you have negative 2 inside of brackets all to the power of 2, then this negative, this exponent of 2 is applying to the negative and the 2 as well. Okay, so the negative comes in there, and now this one here becomes positive 4. Okay, so that's the important thing here to watch out for. So even... Um, now, in the case of an odd exponent, if we have negative 2 to the 3, that's actually equal to negative 2 to the 3. And the reason for that is when we have a, a negative number raised to an odd exponent, the negative appears in the answer. And in this case, it's, it does as well. In this case, it's just 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, and then the negative attaches. So in this case, they are equal. So that's when you're dealing with odd exponents. But when you're dealing with even exponents, they are not equal to each other. So you have to watch out for if the number is inside of brackets or not. Okay, so, so just keeping that in mind. So in this case, the negative 2 is multiplied by itself 3 times. In this case, it's just 2 to the power of 3 and attaching with a negative. You end up with the same answer. Okay, like in, in this case, we get negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And in this case, we get negative 2 times 2 times. I'm just going to take this part out here. negative 2 times 2 times 2. However, because in this case the negative, these two cancel, but then this one stays, it ends up being the same answer. Okay, so that's another thing to keep in mind there for exponents. If I have, say, the number 1 and I have it to the power of 24, because this is an even number, my answer is just going to, 1 to the power of any number, like, is always going to give me 1. 1 to the power of 1,000 would give 1. So 1 to rates to any power is always going to give 1, but the question is, is it going to be positive or negative? So now, because this is even, this becomes positive, and we know that the number 24 is even because if a number ends, we know that by looking at the last digit of this number. So if the last digit of a number ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, that number is considered even. And if the last digit of a number ends in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, then that uh, digit is considered odd. Okay, so if I have the number 24, because the 4 is even, this is considered even. If I have 1,024, again, you look at the final number. Now, if we have the number 1,021, that's considered odd, and I know that by looking at the final digit. So you always look at the final digit to determine whether the whole number is even or odd, okay? Now, in this case, 24 is even because 4 is even, so my answer is positive. Now, what if we had negative 1 to the 25? Well, in that case, this is odd, so this whole thing right here is going to give negative 1. 
okay? Now, what if we have negative exponents? So say you have three to the power of negative two. So what you can do to eliminate the negative is write the number under one. So you can rewrite this in this form, and then it becomes one over, and then you can just work out the exponents. So three multiplied by itself twice, so that gives one over nine. Okay, so when you have negative exponents, this is how you would eliminate the negative. So if you had three to the power of negative three, that you can rewrite that as one over three to the positive three, so you eliminate the negative, and then that's just three multiplied by itself three times. Okay, so again, you could even do this with, say, 2 to the negative 4. I could rewrite that as 1 over 2 to the positive 4, which is just 2 multiplied by itself 4 times 1 over 16. Okay, so that's how you would get rid of negative exponents. Okay, so that's a general rule. Okay, so something like that, or we can even call this a, maybe to make it general. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So we can write it, rewrite it like that. That would be a better way to write it as a general rule. Okay. So now when dealing with roots, when there's nothing written here, there's actually a 2. So in this case, what, what number multiplied by itself 2 times equals 4? Well, the answer to that is 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power of 2, which is equal to 4. So the, four, the cube, uh, square root of 4 is equal to 2. Okay? What number multiplied by itself 2 times? There's nothing written here, so we assume a 2. Well, the answer to that is 5. We we'll give 25. And we know that because 5 times 5 is equal to 25, or 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 25. So the root of 25 is actually equal to 5. If, if we have, say, a 3, now it becomes a little bit different. So now what number multiplied by itself 3 times gives this number? So you have to determine if there's a number to simplify something like this. You have to determine if there's a number that multiplied by itself three times would give uh, the number eight. In that case, it's two times two times two, which is two to the three equals eight. So the cube root of eight is actually equal to two, okay? If we were dealing with negative, in this case, because this is odd, the negative is gonna appear in your answer and negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 actually gives negative 8. So the answer to this is negative 2. Now what if you have an even root, square root, like your fourth root, say, but your number here is negative? Now when you get a situa situation like this, if you plug this into the calculator, you won't actually get an answer. And the reason for that is this is actually, an, it falls into an imagine, the imaginary numbers. So we're gonna. Have, I'm gonna be doing a unit on this later on when we get into more complicated uh, units. So for now, you're gonna keep in mind that this is actually an imaginary number. Okay. So we'll, we'll just leave that at that. So on the calculator, you won't actually get an answer for this. However, if you have an odd one, you will be getting an answer. Okay. We're gonna do imaginary numbers in in more detail later on. Okay. So a little bit about powers and roots. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to email me at evemathtutoring at outlook.com or you can post questions on the channel page as well. Okay.